SpaceX has once again revolutionized the rocket industry by employing a new technique that will make the Starship one of the most advanced spacecraft ever constructed. The company has made several changes to its manufacturing process that no other company had ever thought of. Let's talk about these new changes, why they were necessary and how they will benefit Starship. The towering Starship, with its striking and sleek appearance, captivated fans when it brilliantly lifted off in April. It wasn't just the immense power of the Starship that drew admiration, but also its outer beauty that earned high praise. The spacecraft resembled a colossal blue whale with its sleek and shiny skin, a far cry from its initial rough and unrefined prototypes. In the early stages of the Starship project, SpaceX envisioned a spacecraft made from lightweight carbon fiber, known for its exceptional strength to weight ratio. This material seemed to promise a bright future for the Starship. However, after extensive research, SpaceX faced a significant challenge. Carbon fiber, despite its lightweight nature, started breaking down at around 200 degrees C. This meant that a thick heat shield would be necessary to withstand the extreme temperatures of 1,600 degrees Celsius during multiple re-entries. A pivotal moment arrived when SpaceX made a monumental decision. Instead of carbon fiber, they opted for stainless steel, an economic material costing only $3 per kilogram, in stark contrast to carbon's $150 per kilogram. Despite being heavier, stainless steel offered higher durability and could endure three times the heat that carbon could withstand. Additionally, the production process for composite carbon materials was intricate, requiring meticulous layering of fibers and processing within highly pressurized ovens. For components as large as Starship's 9-meter segments, SpaceX would need an oven larger than anything existing on Earth. Stainless steel emerged as the ideal choice due to its swift and cost-effective joining methods. This decision allowed SpaceX to embark on creating the world's brightest rocket, changing the course of the Starship project. However, the Starship didn't turn out to be as shiny as anticipated due to stainless steel's exceptional heat retention capabilities. This posed a significant challenge during the welding process, a crucial component in spacecraft fabrication. Welding stainless steel demands a high level of expertise and precision, serving as a rigorous test of skill even for the most experienced welders. Additionally, the inherent non-recoverable nature of the metal allowed no room for imperfections, eliminating any margin of error or subpar craftsmanship. Initially, SpaceX faced challenges in the welding process for the Starship due to their limited experience in welding. The first versions of the Starship utilized a welding technique called flux core. This method involved passing an electric current through a wire creating a spark between the wire and the metal, and then melting them together. The melted metal filled any gaps or imperfections. In flux core welding, the wire is wrapped in a material that burns to release a protective gas, shielding the weld from oxygen in the air, which can cause rust. While this technique worked well in controlled environments, SpaceX encountered difficulties because they were working in a large tent rather than a proper factory. Many welds were done by inexperienced workers outdoors, leading to less than optimal results for the Starship's appearance. The welds on the first prototype, called Mark I, exhibited signs of corrosion, cracks, and rough edges. To improve them, SpaceX ground down the welds until they were smooth with the surface. This process wasn't just for aesthetics, it actually strengthened the welds. The sharp edges and small cracks could have caused significant problems once the Starship was pressurized. Grinding down the surface removed these issues and lowered the risk of the welds failing. Ideally, each weld needed to be as strong as the surrounding metal. However, the first Starship test revealed that this wasn't the case. The Mark I prototype exploded due to a failed horizontal weld, which sent a bulkhead flying. To overcome these challenges, SpaceX implemented crucial improvements for their next prototype, the SN1. They opted for thinner sheets of stainless steel for each ring, which required less welding. Additionally, they switched from 301 to 304L stainless steel, which proved to be much more resistant to corrosion during the welding process. Simultaneously, they adopted tip welding, a technique that provided better control over the welding pool. This advancement enabled welders to enhance their precision and penetrate the metal more deeply, requiring fewer individual welds to connect the spacecraft's parts. This reduction in the number of welds significantly decreased the risk of failure. Each weld now reflected the precision and meticulousness that defined Starship's construction. SpaceX also invested in robotic welding machines similar to those used in Tesla's factories. These machines automated a significant portion of the welding process, resulting in cleaner and more precise welds. Additionally, SpaceX started incorporating more support structures within the Starship's body. These structures were strategically placed to prevent the metal from warping under its own weight. Ensuring the overall integrity of the spacecraft, the Starship's remarkable appearance was further enhanced by an astonishing welding method, setting it apart from other rockets in history. This innovative technique involved the use of an automated welding robot equipped with an upgraded friction stir welding FSW control system. 
This version, developed by the Welding Institute Limited in the 90s, became a key factor that distinguished Starship from its predecessors. At its core, FSW utilized a unique approach where metals were joined without undergoing the traditional melting process. Instead, a rotating tool with a specific design profile was plunged into the edges of the metal pieces to be welded. The friction generated by the tool's rotation produced heat, softening the metal without fully liquefying it. As the tool moved along the joint, it effectively fused the metal, creating a seamless and incredibly strong bond. This method eliminated the risks associated with molten metal, ensuring a superior level of precision and structural integrity. The advantages of FSW went beyond its innovative methodology. The mechanical properties of FSW joints surpassed those achieved through conventional welding methods. The absence of melting and solidifying ensured FSW welds were free from defects commonly associated with cooling processes. This resulted in heightened fatigue strength, impressive tensile strength, and enhanced overall durability. Moreover, FSW generated minimal waste, making it an environmentally friendly choice, while also improving the aesthetics of the welded surface. SpaceX's innovations continued to evolve, with the adoption of laser welding for many sections of the Starship. Laser welding, with its concentrated heat, penetrated deeper into the metal, enabling entire ring segments to be welded in a single pass. To further enhance weld strength, an additional step was introduced. This innovation coincided with a shift in Starship's construction approach. Instead of using a complex process involving smaller rectangular steel panels meticulously welded together to create rings, as in the original prototypes, SpaceX decided to employ complete coils of steel directly. These coils were strategically positioned on specialized supports, resulting in a perfect circular diameter of 9 meters. These rings underwent a process called cold rolling, where the metal was pressed through rollers to compress it and elongate its grains, making it stronger. After skillfully rolling and cutting the coiled wires, the steel entered the final phase of transformation. Individual steel segments were welded together seamlessly, transforming them into continuous and sturdy rings. However, during the welding process, the heat softened the metal in that area. To address this, SpaceX introduced a massive planishing machine. Planishing involved hammering down the welds until they matched the hardness of the surrounding metal. This not only increased weld strength, but also improved their appearance. Following this step, the steel rings, often referred to as rings by SpaceX, were lifted onto a specialized fixture, stacked together, and then welded. This innovative approach not only saved assembly time, but also reduced the number of individual welds, creating a more spacious production environment for Starship. Ultimately, the combination of these welding methods yielded a proper process for the craft. This process was evident in the maiden orbital test launch of the Starship, as the massive and shiny spacecraft remained structurally intact, despite the vibrations and intense stresses it endured as it passed through Max-Q. Additionally, throughout the development of the Starship, SpaceX has made remarkable improvements and upgrades, especially in the design of the nose cone, which sits atop the spacecraft. These changes are truly extraordinary, setting Starship apart from other vehicles. In 2019, SpaceX laid the foundation for the Starship project on the coast of Boca Chica, Texas. The first primitive Starship prototype, known as Starhopper, had a rounded top section resembling a tank lid. This prototype, though not resembling a typical rocket, served its purpose for testing. The successful flight of Starhopper on August 27, 2019, paved the way for subsequent prototypes. The first official nose cone for Starship, created for Mark I, featured a conical structure comprising five steel rings tapering gradually toward the top. However, this nose cone was never fully stacked on the Mark I prototype. It was only temporarily placed on top for testing. Later, another nose cone was made for the SN5 prototype, but it did not participate in the flight. The real breakthrough came with the SN8 prototype, which featured a fully stacked nose cone. Notably, these nose cones were equipped with two flaps that played a crucial role in directing Starship's flight and controlling complex movements during maneuvers and landings, akin to how skydivers use their arms for stability. In subsequent iterations, the nose cone design incorporated black hexagonal heat shields on half of the Starship. These shields were crucial for withstanding the intense heat and friction encountered during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. To enhance durability and aesthetics, SpaceX introduced significant changes in the manufacturing process. The number of steel rings was reduced from 5 to 2, and larger steel plates were utilized, minimizing the number of welds. Additionally, SpaceX adopted a new fiber laser welding method, ensuring precise, sturdy, and shiny welds, enhancing the nose cone's durability for harsh mission environments. Furthermore, as Starship's engine count increased from 3 to 6, SpaceX planned to move the methane header tank from its original location to the nose cone, close to the liquid oxygen header tank. This strategic move aimed to balance the mass distribution, especially with the addition of new engines at the stern, 
ensuring stability during flight. As the Starship's second flight edges closer, it will be interesting to see these upgrades in action. What do you think? Can we expect to see the Starship carrying humans to space in the next few years? Let us know in the comments below.